Feel free to check out my tea public after the video and support me on Patreon. Watch till the end of the video for more. Special thanks to Patreon supporter Dangbirds for commissioning this video. If there's something you like for me to cover on the channel, then go support me on Patreon. Hello! You're probably wondering why you are suddenly looking at a robot within an empty void. Well, it has come to my attention that YouTube no longer thinks my content is transformative enough to meet their standards for monetization, despite meeting their standards for monetization, so I decided that, hey, I'm just gonna be a machine now. I might as well succumb to the system's perception of its users not being actual people, cause you know what they say. Imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. But with that out of the way, let us take a look at Captain Harlock, Arcadia of My Youth. Captain Harlock, Arcadia of My Youth is a 1982 sci-fi anime film directed by Tomoharu Katsumata. Known for his work on numerous Toei anime including Mazinger Z and Fist of the North Star. The film is meant to serve as an origin story for the main titular character of the 1977 manga Space Pirate Captain Harlock by legendary mangaka and Daft Punk collaborator Leiji Matsumoto. During its run in Play Comics, Captain Harlock became an instant classic as the story followed the adventures of an outcast who leads a rebellion against the Earth's government due to apathy towards mankind, which allowed themes of freedom and the importance of our humanity to resonate with readers, especially as the story drew numerous parallels to World War II. But with that out of the way, let's talk about the movie itself, produced by, wait a minute, Toei? Ah jeez, YouTube demonetizing my channel's already an issue, now I'm covering a Toei movie. Anyway, the film opens with a monologue being spoken by an explorer named Phantom F. Harlock, voiced by Yujiro Ishihara, traversing over the Owen Stanley Mountains in New Guinea, only to find that a phantom is present and haunts the mountains as Harlock's fate is unknown. We then cut to thousands of years later when a descendant of Harlock, voiced by Makio Inoue, returns from a mission to find that an alien race called the Illumidus Empire have taken over the Earth. Harlock eventually befriends a revolutionary named Tochiro Oyama, voiced by Kei Tomiyama, and it turns out that their partnership was predestined by a wish Tochiro's ancestor made to Harlock's at the end of World War II. Eventually, Harlock finds himself in a firefight against the Illumidus Empire, costing him his eye, and being fed up with the new world he has to live in, Harlock and several others, including another race known as the Tokargans, form a resistance to try and take the Earth back for the human race and exact their revenge on the Illumidus Empire for what they've done. It's worth noting that the story is partially meant to act as a parallel to the German occupancy of France during World War II. During this historical period, the Nazis exploited the nation of France at a point where they were vulnerable, which led to the country being mocked and harshly labeled as incompetent. In fact, Captain Harlock returning to Earth and seeing that the home he once knew has changed kind of reminds me of the time that while I was out and minding my own business between videos, I had no idea that YouTube demonetized my channel until I had to go find out myself as I was never given any warning or message informing me of the situation. He's literally me, guys. But without spoiling too much, I just want to say that this film is fantastic. For starters, the animation for 1982 standards is nothing short of just astonishing. And this is thanks to Kazuo Komatsubara's directing style when it comes to animation. I just adore the post-apocalyptic imagery combined with the film's sci-fi elements and mechanical designs by Katsumi Itabashi, Katsumi Sakahashi, and Kazutaka Miyatake, who designed the Arcadia ship. It just makes for a very visually pleasing film with an appealing aesthetic all around, as it appears very whimsical yet also believable with how grounded the story is. It also helps that the characters are just very fun and memorable all around. You can really feel yourself being immersed in the adventure they go on as the action scenes and some of the circumstances the characters find themselves in come off as being very emotionally driven, which really adds to the stakes presented in the film. I also love the friendship that Harlock and Tochiro have going on. Though I will say, I do find it funny how all the women share the same character design, save for color schemes and outfits. Additionally, this film has some of the most powerful voice performances I've experienced in a movie like this. The voice for Harlock is just right as Makio Inoue is able to portray a protagonist who is very stoic, but also carries a lot of pain and tragedy with him. Other standout performances include Reiko Tajima as Emeraldus, another Leiji Matsumoto character, Reiko Muto as the voice of Harlock's lover Maya, Yuriko Yamamoto as Lamime, Taro Ishida as General Zeta, 
as well as Char Aznable himself, Shuichi Ikeda, as the Takargan Zol. The movie even has Takeshi Aono, the Japanese voice of Roy Campbell in the Metal Gear series, in a role. And of course, these emotional beats would not hit as hard as they do if it weren't for the music, composed by Toshiyuki Kimori. At moments, the music in Arcade of My Youth is either just so beautiful, so upbeat, so breathtaking, so epic. It's easily in my top five anime movie soundtracks with how its orchestral music is capable of being that emotionally powerful. This also includes songs like Taiyo wa Shinanai or The Sun Won't Die by Maria Asahina, which comes off as being both gorgeous and melancholic as well as the end song, aptly named Arcadia of My Youth by Tepe Shibuya, as it makes for a very hopeful note as we see our heroes venture off towards their next journey. After its release, Arcadia of My Youth eventually got a sequel series named Endless Orbit SSX, which lasted 22 episodes, and Arcadia of My Youth eventually made it to the Western localization market under the name Vengeance of the Space Pirate, where 30 minutes of the film would get cut. Labeled just for kids as we see Captain Harlock get shot front and center on the cover, not gonna lie, Arcadia of My Youth has easily become one of my favorite anime films ever. It has such a gripping and compelling story with memorable characters, outstanding animation for the time with excellent voice performances, and an absolutely phenomenal soundtrack. Definitely seek this movie out by any means necessary. In fact, it is available for streaming on Tubi. Damn, now I actually kinda wanna watch the anime. My Patreon supporters can recommend some really cool shit at times. But if you want to recommend me something really cool that's worthy enough for a video, then go support me on Patreon, where for a single dollar you can get access to my Discord server. And other than that, you can also get early access to videos, exclusive content, and receive a t-shirt of your choice from my tea public. And once I reach enough patrons, I'll do a video covering several unmade Godzilla films, so if that's something you like to see, then go support me on Patreon. Feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and this is Titan Goji, signing off.